Welcome back to Sims for Beginners. In the last episode, we talked about the main menu of the game and how to create a sim. So if you need those information, go check out the last video. Today, we're gonna go over cheats, build mode, how to use the gallery and camera controls. So let's get started. Let's talk about cheats. The Sims has a built-in cheat menu that you can use to control your game just a little bit more if you want it. Now to access that menu, hit Control Shift C at the same time on your keyboard and this little menu will pop up over here. In the bar is where you will type your cheats. There's lots of different ones that you can use, but I'm gonna show you my most used ones right now and typically the most common ones that people use. And I will leave a link in the description to a whole list of them. The first one is called Testing Cheats. Testing Cheats gives you the ability to fix your Sims needs, reset them if they aren't working and a lot of other things. Just type testing cheats on in the bar, hit enter, and it'll pop up saying that the cheats are enabled. And now testing cheats is enabled. You also need this one as a bit of a base for most other cheats. So if you find a cheat isn't working, put that one in first and then do your other cheat and it should work. Now to use this one, you just hold shift and click on your sim at the same time and you'll have this extra menu of stuff. It'll be a little bit different based on packs that you have, but you can have the option to kill your sim, cheat the sim info, cheat needs, which I find this the most important. You can make them happy which will fill other needs. You can disable their need decay so their needs won't get bad or re-enable their needs decay. You can give them money, make it into like different sims, mess with their marriage, things like that. Lots of things you can do. You can also shift click on the mailbox for a few other options as well. And if your sim is ever having issues, like they're stuck in a place, like they, they are frozen and things are going correct, just press reset and it'll reset the sim. Just press reset and it'll reset them. The next cheats are money cheats. So open your cheat menu. There are four different money cheats. The first one is Kachin which will get you a thousand simoleons. The second one is Rosebud, which will also get you 1,000 simoleons. The next one is called Motherload, which will get you 50,000 simoleons. And then if you want to change your money to an exact number, you can put money and then the number that you want, and it'll change your money to that. For these next ones, we're going to go to Manage Worlds. So just go and press this button that says Manage Worlds. You can choose to save your game or not, and then it'll take you to Manage Worlds. This takes you out of the household and lets you control all of the households in the world. So here, we're going to add in some more cheats. So open your cheats menu again with Control Shift and we're going to type free real estate on and that makes all of these houses for you to purchase free so if i wanted to go move in another sim like if i had a sim that i was going to move in they wouldn't have to pay for any of these houses now and one more cheat while we're here in manage worlds now this one is rebuild so if you're ever in a location such as the secret worlds or vacation lots or something where you can't build on that you would like to build on type in this cheat bb dot enable free build on and it'll say free build mode is enabled and then you are free to build on whatever lot you want like i said it could be like the secret worlds because each of the secret worlds has a little bit of place to build or if you have packs maybe like the hospital from get to work things like that that way you can customize literally every lot in the sims we are now going to go into build mode and talk about some build mode cheats all right, so build mode. The very first one I suggest using is bb.moveobjects on, and it turns it on. And with that, you're able to overlap your items. So say I wanted to have two bushes sitting on top of each other like that, we could. Without move objects, you can't do that. You can't overlap the items. It also lets you, you know, overlap things. So you could place this in a wall or in the mailbox or in something else. And then if you do it while holding alt as well, you can place things freely on the grid. Next is a unlocking cheat. So you'll find that there's some items in build mode that are locked. Typically they're locked behind career achievements. You'll get things as you level up into your career. If you want to see what those items are, you want to go to this content tab over here, press unlocked, and then you can go to show all over here and that'll show you all the locked items. So say you want to use one of these during your build. Well, go to the cheats bar put in bb.ignore gameplay unlocks entitlement and i'll turn that on and then just flip out of that menu and come back in and they're all unlocked for you this last one is a big one this is called debug if you know anything about the sims you may have heard about debug and the debug menu so i'm going to show you how to access that so this is a combination of two cheats bb.live edit objects and bb.show hidden objects so you go ahead and put those in your menu and then once you have them in there you now have the debug menu and if you don't really know what the debug menu is, it's a secret menu of items that are used in the game. So if you see buildings in the distance or, you know, these machines, or if your sim cooks and there's dishes, just day-to-day -day life, plates, cups, things like that, those are debug items. Now, this is a totally optional thing to use. If you don't want to use this, you don't have to. It can be quite overwhelming without using some mods to make it a little bit easier to use. So I totally understand if you don't want to use this. And I honestly suggest waiting to use it until you're familiar with the base catalog that you have before you move on to to debug because it can be kind of overwhelming to use. Once you have your cheats activated, you want to go over here and type debug. You'll get a bunch of pop-ups over here that fill in the rest of the thing for you. You want to go to one that's just debug right here. 
and I'll come up with a menu full of things. I have a mod and that changes how my debug works, so it's not gonna pop up like this. And then you'll have access to this menu. It'll be full of things like lime wedges and air horns and plates and cups and cleaning supplies and urns, all kinds of things that you are free to use in your builds. You just have to keep in mind that you can't duplicate anything and most things only have one swatch and there are some items that once you place them you cannot remove them like the urn so be careful about placing things like those make sure you kind of test things make sure that once you place it you can still move it again from there if you need to and if not i suggest not using it until you know exactly where you want to put it but there's so many things even like you know piles of money a, a sword a giant sword there's so much fun things to find in here most of them aren't going to be super functional but they're very very fun to have as decorations so that is all about cheats like i said i'll put a link down below to a full list of all kinds of cheats that you can use because there are cheats for careers romance skills and pretty much anything you can imagine there's probably a cheat for it so i will list that down below or you all for your convenience let's talk about build mode i'm not going to teach you how to build anything today that's a whole other video in itself but we're going to go over what's in this mode and what you can do with it first there are two ways to get into build mode you can get into it from live mode while you're actively playing as your sims just press this little button over here the second way to go into it which is my preferred way to do it is through manage worlds so you press the manage worlds button you choose to save or just go you choose the lot that you want to build on and then you go down here and press build this will give you an unlimited amount of simoleons to use plus the lighting will be a lot better to build with as well so this is build mode there's quite a lot of things in this mode so we're going to quickly go over them first off over here we have four different categories we have build objects by room objects by function and household inventory there's also a search bar here where you can search for specific items up here on the left we have the venue info tab which tells you the lot size how much the lot is worth bedrooms bathrooms and then you can change the lot type as well as well as lot traits and challenges you can adjust those here as well plus the name you can change the name if you want the top center we have our toolbar so we have select eyedropper the design tool hammer undo and redo save move the house and lot demolish and lighting on the top right we have our manage world we have the gallery, we have the floor lowering buttons, the wall button, camera controls, notifications, and our settings. And when you click on one of these items over here, you'll also have a tag system. I have a little bit more stuff on here because I have a mod in, but you can filter by styles, colors, special content, and packs. So let's go over what's in each category. So right here is the build category. This is where you're going to find things like walls that's what this whole menu is here there's walls and then you just like you know drag to place your walls there's also half walls as well you can also you can get roof pieces roof swatches roof items fences platforms stairs landscaping pools that's all in this one i highly recommend just looking through all of it if you hover your mouse over any of them it'll tell you what's in each category you also have styled rooms now if you want to create your own house but you don't want to do it the actual building and the decorating you can go to styled rooms there are styled rooms for each pack there will be several for each one with like different types of rooms bedrooms bathrooms kitchens living rooms studies anything you want you can choose a swatch on it buy room and then you place it wherever you want and it even comes with like doorways and everything then you can get other rooms and connect them as well like that i didn't connect those very well the doors that's Oops, it's fine. There's lots of style of rooms that you can choose from if you want to go that route. In the next category, you'll see objects by room. So this will have little tabs for each type of standard room with all of the items in it as well. So you can, again, hover over each one to figure out what's in that. So there's bathroom, bedroom, kitchen, living room, dining, study, kid stuff, and outdoor stuff. In the third category, it's objects by function. So you can see here that I already have the debug menu open. You'll know about that when you watch the part about the debug menu. So when you go to object by function, it'll probably start with just having everything right there. You can go into this tab and you can choose what function you want. But this is another way to find stuff easy. If you don't quite know what you're looking for, but you know sort of the idea of what you want, you can come find it here. So definitely look through those as well as another way to search through things. You can also search in the search bar as well if you know exactly what you're looking for. And lastly is your household inventory. You will only have access to this if a sim is currently living on the lot that you are working on. My sim does not currently have anything in this inventory, so it's empty, but sometimes you'll get furniture from your sim stealing things or from work achievements, things like that. There's lots of ways to get stuff into your inventory. You can also, if you don't want things to be out in your house anymore, but you don't want to sell them, you can add them to your inventory by placing them in your inventory here or just hitting the backspace to pop them in there as well. Now that we've gone over the basics of build mode, here are a few tips to make your life easier when building. There are several things we're going to talk about, so we're going to go one by one. So the first one is alt placement. I talked about this a little bit on the 
portion about cheats, but if you use the cheat bb.move objects on and then you pull out an item and you press alt, you can place your item wherever you want. It does not snap to the grid. So normally it'll snap to the grid like this. You can't really place it anywhere else, but if you hold alt, you can place it in the middle of a square, just like that. So you can place it regardless of where other items are. So I could place my tree in the, in the bushes or in the mailbox, make the mailbox be part of my tree. I don't know if that's functional, but that could be kind of fun. The next thing is quarter tile placement. This is especially useful for things like rugs where you can't necessarily get the exact placement that you want for your rug. So see, you can place it on the on the full tile and the half tile like this. If you press F5 on your keyboard, it now has the ability to place on quarter tiles. So you have a little bit more movement on that. Sometimes it can be challenging to alt place, but it gives you a little bit more control over placement as well. And if you're holding an item, you can press nine to raise up the item into the air. This is great for a lot of different reasons. And then you can also lower it with zero. You can bring it all the way back down. Sometimes if you try to raise something up, it'll throw you to different spot in the world. To fix that, just press Alt and 9 to reset your 9 key, and then you are free to continue raising everything up. Something that's great for landscaping is shift duplicating. So if you want to put like a bunch of landscaping out, you could while you're holding it, if you press the shift key on your keyboard, multiply them like crazy, just like that as you place them. Now say you want an item to be bigger. You can press the right bracket key to size it up, and there's really no limit on how big you can size it up to be. So you can make your hell house a trash can if you'd like. And if you decide you don't like that, you can press the left bracket key to bring it right back down. Now you can also make it really tiny like I just did here. Or press the left bracket key to size it back down. Now for some roofing tricks. Roofing is really, really tricky, especially if you don't know what you're doing. So here's a few tips to help. So when you place a roof, you have this little dot that can just slope of the roof, which is really fun to add different dimensions to your house. However, you can, if you press shift C while clicked on the roof, it'll give you a few more dots so you can adjust it even more and have many more different shape options. And then the little arrows here, these bring out the eaves of the roof. Typically, they'll be like this with the eaves sticking out when you first place them. However, if you don't want them to be there, if you want, don't want them to overlap, you can bring them in like this one had it. However, if you only want to bring in the eaves on one side, so say on the front, we don't want them here, click on the roof, press shift, and bring in that one side, and you can see it only adjusts one side. And then while adjusting the height of your roof, you can do it like this. It'll still kind of snap into place, kind of like it's also on a grid, but if you press and hold alt while you do it, it'll move smoothly so you can adjust it even more. So that is build mode. If you have any questions, be sure to let me know in the comments down below. Next, let's talk about the gallery. To access the gallery, go up to this button with a light bulb. This is accessible through live mode, build mode, and here in manage worlds. You do, however, need to be connected to the internet for this. And if you're not, when you open it, it'll give you an option to connect. Once you open it, there are four different tabs. There's the gallery tab, which is full of all the things you can download. There's the news tab, which is where you'll get any sort of notification of people you follow or comments, people download your own builds, or if Max is favorite something, as well as trending hashtags and just some fun stats under here. Then next is your gallery tab. It shows all the items you've ever shared to the gallery. And lastly is your library. The library is where you'll find all the sims and builds that you've done saved here. The sims will save automatically to your gallery that you, when you create them and put them in the world, you do need to save builds individually to put them in your library. But this is an easy place to grab things that you need that you've created and want to put them into a different save file. Now, going back to the gallery page, there are lots of ways you can search on here. You can view by categories on the side, and you can also search by item name, hashtag, and EA account ID. So if you're looking for something specific, that's where you can put it in. Now, if you want to download something, you can click on the item. There'll be a few different buttons. This means to favorite it. And to find your favorites, you just go over here and click my favorites. You can also, if it's your own build, you can share it right to Twitter. Then over here is the play slot button. So you can hit this button to place it into the world. Or if you plan on editing it, or if you want to put it on a lot that is too small for the real size of it, you can do place and edit, which will take you immediately into build mode when you place it so that you can edit it. Now you can see that this build has a lot of packs used. So say it has a pack that you don't have. It'll have the icon and it'll be grayed out. If you want to find out what items from that pack are being used so you can see if you want to just replace them on your own, you can click the icon, go over here to show use items, and it'll tell you all of the items that are used. If you ever place a build or a sim that uses items that you don't have from packs, it will do its best to replace them with things that you already have. But this is another way of seeing if they use a lot of items with that pack and if it's really worth downloading or if the game's just gonna try to replace too much of it. And again, if you wanna place it, just hit this place lot button and then you can choose what lot it goes on. It It'll fit on any of the lots with the green outlines, but if it has the white outline, it means that you can't place it there. However, say you wanna put it on this lot. So the lot that I'm trying to place is 30 tiles by 30 tiles, and it doesn't fit on this lot. But if I want it to fit on that lot, I can press this button that says place lot and edit, 
which will allow you to place in any of the lots that it doesn't fit in. And then once you go to place it, you can choose if it's furnished or unfurnished. It'll give you this, and this will make it so that you can move it around. If it's yellow, that means it's not going to fit on the lot and it'll be deleted. And you can adjust things however you need it. And you can see that the walls are here, so you can make sure that those are on the lot. And these are just items that were in the yard. Once you have it placed about where you want it to go, you can hit the check mark and it'll place it for you. And you can see a few items on the side got deleted. That is how the gallery works. Just keep in mind that the gallery can go down a lot of the time, so sometimes it'll just break once in a while and it just won't be usable and you just kind of have to go with that. They'll often put on Twitter on the Sims Twitter account or their support accounts if the gallery's down and if it's when it will be back up and if they're going to be doing gallery maintenance and when it will be down and when it'll be back up. One more thing I want to touch on is camera controls. There are several ways to control your camera in The Sims 4, both in build mode and in live mode. However, instead of giving you even more information in these videos, I'm going to link one that I've made before as I've already made a video explaining the different types of camera controls as well as how to take screenshots. So like I said, it'll be linked down below if you would like to learn about the camera controls and I highly suggest watching it. Thanks for watching this video. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe and click the little bell notification for when the next video is posted. In the next one, we're talking about gameplay, hidden secrets, custom content, and mods. And if you have any questions of anything we talked about in this video, feel free to leave it in the comments below or pop over to my Twitch channel and I'd be happy to answer them live for you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!